Dr. Eugene Osborne was one of the most important figures to come out of Carbon County. He was a physician, banker, and a politician. Osborne was born in Westport, New York on June 19, 1858. His first career was in medicine, but it didn't last long. After graduating from the University of Vermont, he relocated to Rollins to open a drugstore. Rollins at the time had a large railroad presence, with the Union Pacific Depot in town. Osborne was appointed to become the assistant surgeon for the Union Pacific Railroad. In 1881 is when Big Nose George was lynched for the murders of Tip Vincent and Robert Widowfield and his attempted escape from the Rollins jail. As a doctor in town, Osborne assisted in the autopsy of the outlaw. However, in this video I want to focus more on his political career which was quite interesting and somewhat tumultuous. Wyoming was still a territory in 1883 and this is where we find Osborne. He had just been elected to the Territorial Assembly. In 1885, unfortunately, he had to leave the seat because he left. Upon his return to Rollins, he served as the town's second ever mayor. Additionally, he was at one point the largest sheep rancher in Wyoming, which is quite a statement. At this time, it was estimated that there were over 200,000 head of sheep in, in Wyoming, making it one of the largest sheep markets in the world. This was due to the instability of cattle prices in the 1880s and 1890s. According to wyohistory.org, sheep prices remained stable during the 1870s while the prices of cattle doubled. Osborne was able to tap into this boom and made a nice little fortune off of his dealings. On July 10, 1890, Wyoming gained statehood, becoming the 44th state to enter the Union. Osborne attended the 1892 Democratic National Convention. During this convention, he was nominated for governor on the 37th ballot. In a contentious battle over who would be nominee, he pulled his name out of contention at one point. Then, when asked to return to the ballot, he put his name back in and eventually won the nominee. John Osborne would defeat Edward Ivinson to become the third governor of Wyoming and assumed office on January 2nd, 1893. Osborne, seemingly impatient to get his gubernatorial career off the ground, attempted to take the office in December of 1892, but his attempt was ruled invalid by the Wyoming Supreme Court. During the inauguration, he allegedly wore the shoes he had tanned from the skin of Big Nose George. His time as governor was filled with the same type of impatience and bullheadedness. The state legislature did not feature a Democratic majority. As governor, he had run as the Democratic candidate. With 22 Republicans, 21 Democrats, and 5 Populists, it was an uphill battle for him to push his policies. He constantly fought with the legislature. Due to his struggles, he declined the nomination in 1897 and decided to pivot to the national scene. One of the major political movements and issues during the 19th century was the rise of populism and the free silver movement. The populist movement began to rise post-Civil War. It appealed to farmers, wage-earning laborers, and women. It was mostly popular in the West, as Western ranchers and farmers were demanding better access to currency backed by silver, a graduated income tax, and the government ownership of railroads, among other social issues of the day, including women's suffrage and prohibition. The populist movement became a viable political option in the United States. Although no party candidates were elected to the presidency, they were able to take seats in Congress and win many local and state level offices. One of the main platforms was the expansion of the federal government to assist the disenfranchised and farmer classes. A main and important issue was on the populist platform was the free silver movement. The free silver movement pushed for the unlimited coinage of silver dollars and a bimetal currency system. This meant that US currency would be backed by both silver and gold. Silver was abundant in the West and was the preferred currency of Western farmers and businessmen. Opponents of silver said that gold would be driven out of business because the price of silver was significantly lower. This all came to a head in the Coinage Act of 1873. In essence, this act created a gold standard for currency. This was when one of the main platforms Osborne stood on politically for the rest of his career. As Osborne entered the national stage, he was elected as representative for the state of Wyoming in Congress. However, he did not last long and declined to run for a second term. 
Entering the 20th century, one of the most eccentric political figures would cross paths with John Osborne. It was at this time that William Jennings Bryan began to become one of the most prominent progressive Democratic candidates. One of the main philosophies that linked Bryan and Osborne was Bryan's opposition to the gold standard. He delivered one of the most famous American political speeches at the 1896 Democratic Convention. At this time, as mentioned before, one of the main platforms of the Democratic Party was the free metalism and bimetallism movement. His speech was a scathing review of the gold standard and held all political themes of the progressive wing of the Democratic Party. Osborne was present at this historic speech and threw his support behind Bryan as the Democratic nominee for president in the 1896 election to oppose William McKinley. McKinley would be elected to the presidency. Unfortunately, he would be assassinated and his vice president, Theodore Roosevelt, would assume the office. Osborne would go on to support Democratic causes and support Bryan's presidential runs in 1900 and 1908. In the 1904 presidential election, Bryan even suggested Osborne run for the Democratic nomination, but Osborne declined. This was also at the height of the popular Theodore Roosevelt presidency. Osborne again would see himself thrust into the Wyoming gubernatorial discussion in 1903 when Governor DeForest Richards died briefly after taking office. After Richards' death, a special election was held. Unfortunately, Osborne was soundly defeated. Osborne would marry Selena Smith in 1907 after the two met on an around-the-world excursion and would remain together for the rest of their lives. Osborne would remain active in politics and especially as a booster and de delegate for the Democratic Party his entire life. During Woodrow Wilson's presidency, he served as Assistant Secretary of State from 1913 to 1915. During this time, Rollins and Carbon County remained his home. He was an instrumental chairman of RNB Bank and was also heavily involved in livestock. Throughout the 20s and 30s, he remained a faithful delegate of the Democratic Party. For the 1936 election, he was selected as one of three Wyoming delegates responsible for selecting FDR as president. Sadly, Selena would pass away in 1942 and Osborne would follow her in death in 1943, where he died in Rollins. They are both buried in Salida's native Kentucky. John Osborne was an interesting character. While he was a player in the national political scene, he still had an everyman type of mentality. He may not have been the best office holder. As his terms as governor and representative were short-lived, he stuck to his political convictions. Additionally, as a booster and promoter of Rollins and Wyoming in general, he stands out as one of Carbon County's most important citizens. Thank you for watching this episode from the Carbon County Museum. Please throw us a like and comment your thoughts on Dr. John Osborne. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do. Also, come visit the Carbon County Museum and check out the famous shoes he wore to his gubernatorial inauguration. I'll see you on the next episode from the Carbon County Museum.